I realized that my last video got cut off, and the answer for that final question was 76.995. Right, so we're going to go on to the next page. Um, and in this example, it says in questions 9 through 12, consider the table at the right that relates curb weight. That means when a car is just sitting there by the curb of certain 2008 vehicles and their estimated highway miles per gallon. Um, not sure if like, you understand the relationship here. They're trying to figure out, does the weight of a car have anything to do with how many miles per gallon it gets when you're driving? Um, so here's my data. And so we're assuming that the weight of the car comes first. So this is going to be my X which is my independent. This is going to be my Y, which is my dependent. And it asks us to use a statistics utility, which remember is your graphing calculator. And find the line of best fit for this data. So I'm going to go ahead and have you um, enter this data into the graphing calculator. In case you forgot how to enter data into the graphing calculator, we are going to go to Stat and Edit. And because I already have this data in here, I'm going to need to go to the top of the column and hit Clear and Enter. I'll go to the top of my L1 column and I'll also hit Clear and Enter and that clears out my columns. Now what I'm going to do is in L1 I'm going to put the curb weight and in L2 I'm going to put the highway miles per gallon. Okay, so let's look at the data that we have in the calculator and let's go to stat and calc. Go to linear regression. Oh, I need to switch this. Remember earlier I had my X list, I had to switch it, so I need to switch that back so that that's L1. And then I need this to be L2. And now I can go to calculate. And there are my A and B values. So now I can write down my equation for my line of best fit. Okay, so for my line of best fit, I'm going to go ahead and take it out three decimal places. The reason I'm doing that is the more decimal places I take it out, the more accurate um, my predictions will be. So I get y equals negative 4.221x plus 44.257. I want to remind myself that x is curb weight. And y is miles per gallon. It is highway miles per gallon. All right, now the next question asks me for the correlation coefficient. So we are going to actually go back to our calculator. And we notice on the calculator it doesn't give us any other information. But the calculator can give us more information. Um, it can give us the correlation coefficient. And we um, find that information by pulling up the catalog. So we're going to have to hit second and zero. That brings us to the catalog, and I'm going to scroll until I get to where it says diagnostics on. So I'm going to go up here, diagnostics on. And I have to hit enter again so that it says done. Now when I go to stat and calc, and linear regression and calculate, it should now give me more information. It actually gives me even more information than I need. Um, it gives me an R squared value, which we'll talk about at another point, but R is the correlation coefficient. And we usually do it to two decimal places. Think of it kind of like a percentage out of 100. So this um, correlation coefficient would be negative 0.92. The negative tells me that there's a negative correlation. Remember when we looked at our scatter plots, negative means it's decreasing. And look at the slope of the line, it's decreasing. 
So these should always match. So it's negative because the slope is decreasing, and then it's 0.92. So I'm going to write for my correlation coefficient that r equals negative 0.92. Notice it's r. The correlation coefficient is r, not r squared. That's different. We're going to learn about that later. So let's look at our multiple choice question. It says the correlation coefficient can best be described as, well, first of all, it's negative. So if it says positive, I can eliminate those choices. Is it uh, weakly negative, moderately negative, or strongly negative? I would say anything that is 0.9 and close to, um, well, in this case, negative 1. If it was positive, it would be close to 1. So we want to be either close to negative 1 or 1. Because it's 0.9, I'm going to say it's strongly negative. If it was, let's say, in the 0.8s or 0.7s even, I would say moderately negative, and anything below 0.7 is weakly negative. <clears throat> so this next question asks us to describe in words what the correlation coefficient means in the context, which means we have to talk about curb weight and miles per gallon. What this correlation coefficient tells me is that there is a strong negative relationship. In other words, there is a very strong relationship between the weight of a car and highway miles per gallon. So I'm going to write that down first. There is a strong correlation or relationship, a strong correlation between curb weight and highway miles per gallon. So that's the first thing that I want to say. And then I've got to talk about this negative. And it's negative because as the curb weight goes up, the highway miles per gallon goes down. So as curb weight increases, the highway miles per gallon decreases. So as one goes up, the other goes down. That's what gives me a negative slope. Um, if it was a positive slope, as one went up, the other would go up. Or as one went down, the other would go down. But when one goes up and the other goes down, that's what gives us a negative slope. And that's why we had a negative correlation coefficient. Negative, because as the weight increases, the miles per gallon decreases. Strong, because it's that 0.9 and above. All right, let's look at another example. Here we're going to use this data um, and look at greenhouse emissions and fuel economy for five different car models. So we want to use the statistics utility to calculate the regression line and the correlation coefficient. So I'm going to ask you to use your calculator, and you're going to um, go ahead and enter this data. We're going to say that the city miles per gallon is going to be um, the X, which is the independent. And we're going to have the greenhouse emissions be the Y, which is the dependent. So you're going to enter this into L1, you'll enter this into L2. I want you to write out your regression line. Let's go to three decimal places and do your correlation coefficient and do that to two decimal places. So here's the data entered into the calculator. And then I'm going to go to stat and calc. We need regression. Go down to calculate. All 
Right, and so the equations that I got was that y equals negative 0.545x plus 19.358, and my correlation coefficient is negative 0.97. All right, so the reason we do linear regression models is to make predictions, just like on the previous page we did the one about the fish. How much zinc in a fish that has two milligrams of lead. So we're going to use this linear regression line to make predictions about greenhouse emissions for cars getting all these different highway miles per gallon. Now on the previous page when we were finding it for the fish that had two milligrams of lead that was one problem. So we just substituted the two in for x and we got our answer and we were done. It was very simple. Here we want to remember that this is my miles per gallon. This is my emissions. Well, on this one, I've got six different times I have to do the substitution. That's a lot of substituting to do. So there is another way to substitute when you're substituting for lots of different values. And so we're going to actually go to our graphing calculator. All right, so on the graphing calculator, I'm going to go to y equals, figure out this equation that I have here, and I'm going to type in my linear regression equation. And then instead of pulling up a graph, I'm going to pull up the table. So I hit second graph, and it gives me all the different values when these are my values for x, here are my values for y. And what I can do is just scroll in my table, for instance, to the first one, at 15 miles per gallon, I get 11.183. And so next to 15 miles per gallon, I'm going to write 11.183. All right, so what I would like for you to do now is to find the answers for the remaining five by simply scrolling through your table and finding what the emissions would be for cars with the set amount of miles per gallon. All right, so now you can check your answers that you got by scrolling through your table with the answers that I have here. And the last thing we're going to talk about here is the difference between interpolation and extrapolation. Um, we can say interpolation and extrapolation, interpolation, there's all different, it's kind of like potato, potato. But we're going to look at interpolation versus extrapolation. Interpolation is when you make predictions. Okay, so you're going to make predictions within the range of known data values. So you have to be within the range of the known data values. So when I look up here at this problem, uh, let's see, the lowest um, miles per gallon I have is 11. The highest is 24. So my known data values in this problem, I'll give you an example, is from 11 to 24 miles per gallon in the example that we just did. So any predictions we make for cars with that get between 11 and 24 miles per gallon, that's going to be interpolation. All right, and then extrapolation. Again, is when you make predictions outside the known data values. So in this instance, in this example, that would be um, where we would say x is less than 11 or x is greater than 24 anytime we make predictions like that. So when we look at the questions that we answered, number 14 is an instance of interpolation, 